Welcome to Rally 101 on suspension. In this video, we'll talk to you about how the suspension works in the Hyundai i20N Rally 2 car, what changes you can make, and how it affects the performance. So suspension on a rally car is probably the key difference that makes it different from any other motorsport in the form that it has to deal with so much punishment, whether it be from rough roads in Greece or the jumps in Finland, the snow in Sweden or the smooth tarmac roads in Spain. The dampers or suspension has to deal with all this punishment while also trying to extract as much performance, as much grip as we can from the car. So starting here, we have our fully complete McPherson strut. Same front and rear, very heavy duty, a lot bigger diameter uh, tubes, which allows for not only strength, but allows there to be more oil and gas inside for greater performance, but also a lot longer. We're running up to 300 mil of suspension travel here, which allows it to take the punishment that it needs to on some of the gravel rallies around the world. So obviously it's mounted into the car at the top mount at the top, which is directly into the chassis of the car. And of course here at the bottom with three pickup points, which are into the upright. So the basics of the damper start with internals, which we can't see here, but inside we have a monotube, which inside the monotube we have the main shaft of the damper, which has the piston and the shims inside. And basically the whole way the damper works is how this piston and shaft moves through the oil inside the main tube. The movement of this piston and shims is dictated by the port sizes in both the pistons, but also the shim stacks that you have on both sides of the piston which restrict or open the oil flow accordingly to whatever setup is built in there. Effectively, the easier the piston and the shim stack can move through the fluid, the softer the damper, or vice versa, the stiffer the shim stack or the harder it is for the oil to pass by the piston, the stiffer the damper. So it's absolutely essential that not only is the correct oil specification used inside the damper because you'll be surprised how hot and how much of a hammering these take during a rally. But it's also about making sure there's no air in the system and making sure it's pressurized. So using the canister here on the back with a separating piston inside, the top here is filled with nitrogen gas, which pressurizes the system and allows that oil fluid to be flown at a constant rate with the piston and the shim stacks. So once all together, we have three main adjustable points on the damper. We have the low speed compression, the high speed compression, and on top we have the rebound. Within all of these, we can adjust within the parameters that are set up with inside the damper, how soft or how hard that we want the damper to be set up. And again, this differs depending on the driver or the conditions. So some general rules of thumb is the softer the suspension is set up, the more grip and traction you're gonna get. This is particularly interesting if the rally is really rough or very slippery, you need the damper to be soft to be trying to find grip that you can't find from the road. The downside to this, of course, is a soft car can be an unbalanced car and you lack precision. So depending on how much precision the driver wants, you then may have to make the car a little bit stiffer to give the driver confidence to push. It's all about a fine balance between maximum grip and traction, but also maximum driver confidence. A softer car also allows you to use the inertia of the body and the weight transfer under braking or cornering to your benefit. But again, this is not just about how it works in correlation with the dampers, this also has to work with the roll bars, the roll center, and the geometry of the car. The opposite to having your car soft is to have it stiff. And by having the car stiff, it actually allows you to sometimes push the wheel into the ground more to generate more grip. But for this to be, you need a good road surface with high grip. So this means tarmac or a hard base gravel surface where you can actually get grip from the road. And in these cases, you're gonna to wanna to set up your suspension to be more stiff to actually push that tire into the ground you're not looking for as much mechanical grip. You're actually looking for grip from the tire and the road that it has to offer. If the tire and the road doesn't have grip to offer, that's when we need to be looking for mechanical grip, which we do by softening the dampers or the roll bars. So of course the suspension is working together with the roll bars and the chassis setup of the car. And it's about trying to get the right balance across all of these. So what you might find is if it's a soft damper, the chassis of the car is very unstable, it's moving a lot, but you're doing this to try and get some grip and traction out of some adverse conditions. 
So to counter this, you can potentially go stiffer on your roll bars to try and control this body movement so the driver has still got confidence, but the damper is still soft enough to try and find some grip. Or you could be the opposite way. You could be soft on the roll bars to allow the car to roll to create inertia, which can create grip, but then you want the damper to be stiffer to be able to give some support to the chassis. Again, driver preference. Some drivers like the car moving a lot, some not. And in my personal preference, I'm sort of in the middle. I, I want grip, I want traction, but I also need support from the chassis to give me confidence to drive fast. Effectively, a confident driver is going to be a fast driver and that can overcome any lack of grip or traction. So we have a few key adjustable features within the suspension that we use to our benefit on events. Starting with the spring. The spring is what is supporting the chassis effectively and, and the softer the spring, the more movement you're going to get in the car. The stiffer the spring, the less movement, but also the less grip. So it's about the spring working in correlation with the damper. If you're on a very soft damper, you're going to have to be more stiffly sprung to support the car. Vice versa, if you're stiffly dampered, you're going to want to be on a softer spring. Again, it's about getting the combination right, but it's also dependent very much so on the rally and the conditions that you're competing in. Once the spring's on the car, you're more or less stuck with that for the looper stages or the rally. But one thing you can be adjusting between stages or whenever you like is the low and high speed compression and rebound. So starting with the low speed compression, this is effectively adjusting how soft or how stiff the damper is at low speed. This is small compressions, general handling, as you're leaning on the car through corners, you know, how much do you want the car to be leaning over to generate grip or do you want it to be more supported? Is the car becoming too unbalanced? In which case you'd want to close the low speed. Or if you're in low grip conditions and all of a sudden you've found that the car's sliding around and you don't have enough grip or traction, in that case, we're gonna to wanna to open the low speed. So generally everything for the handling and the grip of the car will be adjusted through the low speed compression. The high speed compression is not affecting the general grip and handling of the car so much. The high speed is more protecting the car under high speed compressions such as potholes or bumps or landings on jumps. Generally, the rule of thumb is anything over 600 millimeters per second is where the high speed comes in. And this is for severe uh, impacts and how you protect the car to stop it from bottoming out or to generally make the ride a little bit smoother in harsh conditions. And then lastly, on the top here, we have the rebound adjustment. And effectively, this is working in correlation with both the low and high speed compression. And the rebound is basically controlling how fast the wheel returns to the ground. So the softer the rebound, the quicker the wheel can get back to the ground, particularly after jumps or undulations in the road. The stiffer the rebound, the more precise the car will feel, it will feel more racy or it might feel better as a driver, but the wheel might be tending to bounce off the ground. If the wheel is not in contact with the ground, you're losing grip and you're losing traction. So it's about finding the right compromise between having enough precision through the chassis by closing the rebound, but not closing it too much that you actually lose grip and traction. A fully open rebound can effectively feel like a boat. It's moving all over the place, it is generating grip, but as a driver, it can be hard to get confidence in a car that is moving around a lot. So obviously, this is a gravel damper. The tarmac damper is somewhat shorter and looks a little bit different, but we do have a separate video on the difference between gravel and tarmac, so make sure you check that out in our other Rally 101. The last adjustment we have is the ride height, which is simply adjusted by turning the platforms up or down, anti-clockwise or clockwise, to increase or decrease the ride height. And this will be different from rally to rally, again, depending on the conditions. If it's a very rough rally, we'll obviously run the car higher to give more ground clearance for the car. For smooth rallies, such as a Finland or a Sweden, we're gonna decrease the ride height, which is gonna allow us to have a lower roll center, which means a faster car. Between stages, we can make changes to the low speed and high speed compression, rebound, and even the ride height. So the general rule of thumb is to make it harder, adjust it clockwise, to make it softer, adjust it anti-clockwise. But the spring and any damper valve changing needs to be done back at service. But there also needs to be some changes between the first and second loop. Often we see on gravel rallies around the world, the second loop is a lot rougher, you can get ruts develop in the road, and this requires a different setup. So often, the first thing is we need to lift the ride height. We need more ground clearance for rougher conditions. So again, increasing the platform height to give us 10 to 15 mil or more ground clearance makes a big difference. So also for the second pass, we may want to change the spring rate. And there could be varying reasons for this. Maybe the first pass is low grip conditions. And in low grip conditions, you're going to want to run a softer spring rate to allow you to generate more grip. 
Second pass might be higher grip, so you're gonna to wanna to increase the spring rate. But likewise, you could have a second loop that's a lot rougher, and to actually utilize the ruts that have been developed in the road, you often have to either increase the spring rate or increase your roll bars to actually allow the car to stay into the ruts and lean up against the side of the ruts. What this means is you can really lean on them and carry more corner speed. And finally, maintaining your dampers is absolutely key to make sure you have a good car at each and every event you get to. And there's some real simple tips that you can do. As simple as, after every event, making sure all your clicks are even, front to rear, left to right. Seems simple, but often these can change during a rally. Secondly, making sure they're clean. Making sure the scraper seal here is clean of any dirt or grime to allow for the damper to be able to freely move. And thirdly, checking the pressure. You can often see maybe on gravel rallies that you might have a small leakage. So eight bar of nitrogen gas to make sure this damper is working efficiently and effectively. So that was our guide on how the suspension on the Hyundai i20N Rally 2 car works, what changes you can make and how it affects the performance. For more videos like this, check out the rest of the Rally 101 series. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs>